Hi, hello, hi. As you probably know, tomorrow is the first day of Pride in the US and in the majority of Canada. It's actually not the first day of Pride here for some reason, but in most places, uh, tomorrow is probably the first day of Pride. So I wanted to kick off Pride by just making a video talking a little bit about accessibility and kind of some of my frustrations, honestly. I haven't been to Pride in a long time and when I do go to Pride, I have a lot of trouble. I know a lot of folk probably don't realize it because if you're not in that position, it's kind of hard to realize it, but a lot of Pride events, at least here in Montreal, are really inaccessible. Also, so are most like queer establishments, like, like gay bars and stuff like that. For some reason, they're always up a flight of like rusty stairs and then even inside the bar, it's like four levels and you're like, who can go here? <laughs> who is this for? <laughs> anyway, Pride itself um, has been a struggle for me for a lot of reasons and kind of just, you know, want to talk to you about that because it's Pride and why not? So, so accessibility could mean a lot of things. It's not necessarily only about wheelchair accessibility or mobility aid accessibility in general, but it could also be about like, folk with sensory processing issues, autistic folk. The one part of Pride that's usually a little easier for me is actually the Trans March, which is kind of separate from Pride. It's like a community organized thing from what I understand. And apart from the fact that it is a march <laughs> and it's long, and if I don't have a wheelchair, I can't do it. In the past years, they've actually taken a lot of initiative to make it more accessible to those with um, sensory sensitivities. In the description of the event, at least in the, the last time that I checked it, I didn't even go last year, but before that, they ask you to wash with uh, odorless soap or not very strong soap and to not put colognes and perfumes and stuff like that uh, to make the event more accessible to other people. And I, I thought that that was actually really considerate. It was really nice because it's a small effort that makes a big impact to a lot of other people. I'm not someone who particularly has an issue with the smell of soaps. There are other smells that bother me, but soaps are usually quite pleasant. It's not that bad. Overbearing cologne, sometimes it's a lot smacks you in the face a bit and I'm like, okay, we, we get it, it's Old Spice. But um, usually most of the time, if it's mild, I can handle it because I find it pleasant. But a lot, of, I, know, I know a lot of people who won't be able to go to really crowded places because it's just so many smells. But yeah, that's a first tip if you're organizing a Pride event. Um, for myself, my biggest sensory sensitivities are auditory, uh, visual, and um, I forgot the word, but basically like touching. <laughs> I want to say kinetic, but I feel I, that just makes me think of kinetic sand and I don't, that's not what we're talking about today. But anyway, um, what helps me with my sensory processing difficulties at these events is wearing noise canceling headphones, which I know are not accessible to everyone. They're incredibly expensive and I'm very lucky to have received a pair as a gift. But what worked before that were the um, headphones that construction workers use. I think I have a pair. So you could get headphones like this on Amazon or probably like most department stores really. And they're the type that construction workers use when they're using like a jackhammer or something. They do block out a fair amount of, oh my God, I can't even hear myself. Oh, this is nice. But yeah, they do block out a fair amount of sound. I'm instantly calmer. <laughs> you forget how much noise being alive makes, like just the world makes sound. I can take a nap, okay. Anyway, you could get these. They're very affordable and they're a really great alternative. If you don't like these, you find these uncomfortable, which I understand because they squeeze on your head. If you're wearing glasses, it could just be, it's a lot. I get why that might not be comfortable. There are also little squishy foam earplugs and they make children's size. If the adult sizes are too big or too uncomfortable. And I actually do find those earplugs really effective. Like sometimes it takes a little while for me to adjust to them. And at first I kind of want to like crawl outside of my skin, but I give it a couple minutes and uh, sometimes if I could tolerate it, it really does help with the stimulus without having to have something on my head. So that's another alternative for the noise barriers. If you are someone like me who has EDS and POTS, for those of you who don't know, POTS is a common comorbidity of EDS. Uh, it stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's gonna be really important to stay hydrated. So bring some like Gatorade or any electrolyte beverage of your choosing. I personally really like maple water, but that's because I'm Canadian trash. So I mean, I don't know. <laughs> coconut water? I think coconut water is a pretty common one that people drink. For eye sensitivity, of course, I, I wear sunglasses. It's usually not intense enough. Usually sunglasses paired with like a cap and maybe like an umbrella and maybe inside a building with air conditioning, but you know, I won't. <laughs> That's just me. But yes, um, 
usually sunglasses aren't enough, so adding a cap or having like an actual chair with a little umbrella, that might also help. I try not to be touched by other people, which is a bit of a challenge. Places like the parade. I can't stand during the parade. I can't stand for long or walk for long, and it's getting worse and worse every year, so I, I just I haven't been to the parade since I think like 2016. And even then I sat on the floor. But now if I go to the parade this year, I plan on taking my wheelchair with me so that I have a place to sit. And when you are sitting down somewhere, you're actually like what I've noticed is I make less physical contact with other people because I have an established space. So usually I've noticed in a crowd that usually like your body is your established space and people will step in until they're like touching and your skin cells are like but like when you're in your chair, the chair is almost like a boundary, you know? It's like you're you're on a block in Minecraft and it just, it helps. People, like they'll brush up against the chair. I won't notice because they're not brushing up against my flesh. And that is an amelioration over <laughs> the alternative. So even if you don't use a mobility aid, if you bring like a folding camping chair or something, I was gonna say a lawn chair, but I think those are like, to 10. But anyway, bringing a chair might be a good a good choice. And I know that doesn't cover everything. There are issues like events not being accessible because they don't have anyone signing, so people who are deaf won't have access to everything that's going on and the things that are being said. There are just a number of reasons why an event may be inaccessible. My advice would be if you are the organizer of an event, maybe take some online polls of the people who are attending or just like err on the side of caution and take the steps necessary to make sure your event is as accessible as possible. But I mean, I, I get it if there are limited resources, find out what those who are attending would need in terms of accommodation and do your best to accommodate. Find out if there are any volunteers who could sign, for example. If you're a, an organization, then you could have people volunteer and then give them uh, letters of recommendation or they could put it on their CVs, stuff like that. Like, I don't know, maybe you could compensate them if you're making a little bit of money. Like paying someone a little is better than not paying them at all. So that's cool. Um, or you could give them merchandise. I don't know, whatever you work out with your working people. Those are some of my suggestions. If you are are attending an event with someone who has sensitivities or has accessibility needs, ask them what they need. Maybe it'll be something as simple as just like needing a lift there because, you know, public transport is not very accessible <laughs> to many of us. And something as small as just like, I could give you a ride there and a ride back and a ride to a bathroom or food if you need that, like I'll be able to take you to the places you need to go throughout the day. That, when I didn't used to drive, used to be a huge game changer for me in terms of being present at an event or staying home. Because sometimes it's not only just about getting there and getting home, it's about knowing that if something happens while you're there, you're not reliant on inaccessible modes of transportation transportation. It's, it's good to know that you could relatively independently move around and leave based on your own fluctuating needs. So yeah, if you have a friend and you drive, go ahead and ask if you could give them a hand and maybe everyone could like chip in for gas or parking or something. And then it's a win-win-win situation. I'm trying to be upbeat about this because it's the first video before Pride. So I don't want to drag anyone down or be too aggressive, I guess, in the way that I feel about when it comes to inaccessibility and Pride. But I do actually have a whole lot of strong feelings. It feels oftentimes that when you're disabled, you're forgotten by most other communities and it really shocks me every time that the LGBT community is so laden with lack of accessibility. And again, in Mont maybe it's just a Montreal thing, but I'm like, why are all the bars up a lighthouse amount of stairs? Like, why are they like, we're going to build this bar on top of this one street light. I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> It puzzles me. Add an elevator. Maybe even if you are not someone who requires an elevator, but you know that the local queer bars in your neighborhood are exclusively accessible through a flight of stairs, maybe call the owners or write to the owners and try to push to add to the voices of the people who are likely already asking them to add an elevator. Because again, accessibility, like even an able-bodied person who like breaks both their legs or something is going to probably benefit from an elevator. I mean, it's not just us. Just put an elevator, please. I'm Anyway, that's it. Those are some quick sensory accessibility tips from me. Stay hydrated, bring your sunblock, all that good stuff. And that's it. Those are just a few of my tips to make Pride a little more tolerable to some folk who might have similar needs to mine and a little bit of a push for others to be aware of the lack of accessibility at Pride and to maybe help advocate and help add to the voices pushing to make Pride events more accessible and make queer venues more accessible and stuff like that. It helps. The more voices, the more pressure for change, the more likely that change will actually happen. So thank you. All right, that's it. Have a safe and happy start of your pride. I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right, thanks. Bye.